If you want the tea on the newest AR experiences published over the reality, then stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. I'm Alexis Mercedes, the project manager for Fractal Labs. We focus our attention on the intersection of augmented reality, crypto technology, and metaverses. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely like and subscribe because I post a video every Tuesday. This is episode seven. Seven, can you believe we've gotten to seven already? Reviewing 13 different augmented reality experiences published to over the reality. Over the reality is like other metaverses in that you can interact with other people embodying an avatar. This is the newest version of social media because it's all user generated content. And I've got 13 different publications that were created in the last two weeks or so for you to enjoy. Let's not wait another second before talking about raining tacos. Cyber Nerd Baby has done it again. On another land owned by Space Joe 8, they've given us tacos raining from the sky. I can't imagine how long it must have taken just to get the taco rain exactly right. Like this is the correct density, the correct speed. It's got to be so abundant that it creates awe and intrigue, but it also has to load in a reasonable rate and be functional. But they didn't stop there. It's not just raining tacos. There are some super fun characters running around. It's like the same body, but ha inhabiting different personalities for sure or different moods. And that character is cute. And on top of that, the tacos themselves are characters. So this is tremendously fun. And again, Cyber Nerd Baby is really the only one putting out builds that require the Unity integration because of that click interaction. I just don't bump into very many that use the interactive element. But Cyber Nerd Baby is consistently creating builds of that type. So congrats and ta-da. This will be the only interactive piece of this episode. However, I've got a lot more fun and games to show you. This one's called Siemens and I'm dying to know if Siemens paid for this to be created or if somebody made this to show to Siemens because I could see that as a great business move where you build something amazing and then show it to someone and say, hey, look what I built for you. Maybe you wanna hire me to continue this type of work. I find it interesting that most of the signage is in English, while the recording that plays is in French. Dans un cabinet radiologique normal, hein, il y a tout le monde, c'est normal. Mais du coup, voilà, beaucoup plus de sérénité, beaucoup plus de concentration, et du coup, bah, une meilleure prise en charge des patients. Et c'est ce qui est important. Pour conclure, l'outil virtual cockpit a eu donc plusieurs impacts. Si la machine est en route, si on a une limite de SAR, on sait que, le, le, que notre collègue va le gérer, et du coup, bah, on prend beaucoup plus de temps avec les patients, c'est plus zen. Les gens ne s'en rendent peut-être pas forcément compte, mais en tout cas, nous, on sait qu'on est beaucoup plus là pour eux. Lorsqu'on utilise l'outil Virtual Cockpit, on a quand même une tranquillité puisqu'on est loin de l'activité. Et ça, c'est intéressant. De plus, l'utilisation de Virtual Cockpit nous permet de changer la routine, de faire une nouvelle activité et un peu de challenge. Look at this name tag! This creator gave us their contact information in the coolest way possible. I love when they leave a calling card. Now I know how to get a hold of them. Hello, I'm down at Oaks Amusement Park. Uh, I thought I would offer some wonderful backdrops as well as some wide open spaces to explore VR. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. This 
this next one is called Eve by Daxium. Could be Dax I am. Once I got in deep, I realized that this was the second installment of the Spirit of Yorkville. That first Spirit of Yorkville was markedly a turning point for us in the English speaking over community. That was the moment where we realized we really had to up our game and do amazing things. Thanks for being a benchmark and pushing us forward and congratulations on another amazing build. also have haunted hex love seeing stuff like that especially this time of year the owner is eater rock which we know is soyo crypto aka joe aka someone i talk about on this channel quite a lot they are a person who really is supporting creators by publishing other people's art in the hexes that he owns so a huge crux of community and artist support here. If you don't follow him on Twitter already, what are you waiting for? And also check out the Eater Rock lands in Over because they've got a good lot of good ones. This one is super cute, very on theme. I just wish that you could go inside of the building. to our Halloween theme, we have Witch Over House Fog. The owner is Hot Tab, which is a name I haven't bumped into before. The intricacy of this model tells me that this was built in a very different program, perhaps Blender or a series of Adobe products, but this is no easy feat and it does seem to be one thing, like one model that has animations attached to it. I could be wrong, but what I think is going on here is that somebody spent a ton of time building this and then was able to export it into different formats, including GLB, so that they could import it into Over. Because if you want your model to load in Over and you're not going to use Unity, then export it as a GLB. Here's a new project by Lo-Fi Radio. We see their builds a lot and this one doesn't disappoint. I know they've been promoting it on Twitter, uh, but I would have included this in the review either way because I like that they covered all the angles. Like you can definitely see that they checked the experience from all the different viewpoints to troubleshoot to make sure that it looks good from all the angles because that's one of the belaboring pieces of 3D artwork is that you kind of have to look at it from all the sides over and over and over again and I think this is a great example of a job well done when it comes to that. I also think they did a great job of keeping the stylization very consistent throughout, keeping the scaling appropriate and also having features of note that are both low and high i think that utilizes ar technology best is when you can get like very low and very high uh, attention on things that's what makes me feel the most immersed the most transformed and of course the music's really good too <laughs> Thank you. 
This next experience is called Gashaft. If you know how to pronounce that correctly, let me know in the comments. Gashaft Sarah dash punk 16. The thumbnail of this image drew me in because I thought it was gonna be something interactive and it wasn't. I haven't seen a model exactly like this before with the talking bubble. I'm surprised I don't see that more often. I wish I knew what it said, but this would be a great way to introduce characters into your AR experiences where you can have them give the viewer a message. Why wouldn't you want the AR characters to talk to you? I thought it was cool how the body of the person had a shadow, but the talking bubble didn't. I thought that was a pro touch. Animation season by Lead Better. They're setting up a haunted house behind me, like a big, a big haunted house. <laughs> I know during COVID it was like a drive through one, so it's pretty fun to have some construction of spooky vibes going on in the background. <laughs> this is the same person as our dear friend Hexidized, who could be described as the glue of the English speaking over community. He's been sharing with us a lot about exploring new forms of animation. By that I mean different applications that make animating 3D models easy, more fun to use, better to use, with better results. So creating an immersive educational version of that makes total sense. You know, it's one thing to hear about what it does and it's another thing to see it in action. And the land name is Hang With Charles that I just, I love that land name. That's a great land name. Next up, we have Play for Climate by Marco Pizzini. I've seen a physical board game describing different metaverses, well, more specifically blockchains. This is the first time I've seen a board game in the metaverse describing the physical environment. The setting is kind of unusual to me. It's like a high school science lab. I'm not exactly sure what this is meant to do. Like, are the avatars supposed to stand behind these rows of counters and look forward at the person with the bulletin board? I don't exactly know how to interpret it, but there's a lot of great aspects going on here. Everything's to scale and has a color story that's consistent. They remembered to include their name tag and a link to the website where I was able to get a lot more information. And perhaps one day we'll be able to play this board game in real life. And by real life, I mean the physical world because virtual is still real. I'm excited to see more climate-based info happening here. Love the opportunity to talk about real issues in the metaverse. Also filmed at the amusement park is Casino. This blast from the past puts history into the future. This feels like a museum exhibit, but it's done in a way that could only exist in AR. A mix of text photos, and architecture, we get to walk around a commemorative space to what I presume is a real casino which existed in the 1800s. I love the posters, the mix of colors, the random break dancing. There's a few things that need some editing. The hexagon that marks the suggested boundaries of the build is flashing. So I think they somehow moved it, which is unfortunate. There's similar flashing in other places, which I've explained means that they're two different images occupying the same space. Because it's such a mix of mediums and this was filmed at an amusement park, it's one of those screen recordings that makes it difficult to discern between what was added in AR and what existed in front of my physical body. This is getting me to dream about all kinds of different things we could be building. 
There's a fantastical use of scale here. For example, the blown up version of the ticket. I could see a document like that being expanded for closer inspection in a museum-like setting. But it's so much easier to do in AR. The expensive costs of creating a fully immersive exhibit are withering away. Money is no longer the barrier to be able to demo the information that you believe is important. Number 11 is Golden Book, I-M-I-M-R. Lovely. Does this building look familiar to you at all? That's right. It's the over showroom, which means you can use this same model for free. You can load this and adapt it to fit your own scenario. These folks have used it to display some literary works. When I hear Golden Book, I'm picturing like the children's book Golden Books, but this is instead a collection of poems, a novel, Coraline is in here, as well as a lot of buy now buttons that don't lead to anything. I'm impressed with how high resolution they were able to get these photos of this size, and I think they used exactly the right amount of text. That's probably the most information you can give that somebody would read while being in AR. I think this is a great start to something beautiful. I can't wait to see what they do next. Question, do you think that leaving those models in improves the experience? The mannequins, to me, are used to create scale and can be deleted once you're ready to publish. But perhaps these human-like bodies make the space feel more welcoming and more human. Oh look, a butterfly! We also have Pobledos, perhaps? That's the fun thing about Over is that since it's in a whole bunch of different languages, you never know what you're trying to pronounce. Uh, even as someone who's almost bilingual, meh. That's a generous description. It can be really hard to try to pronounce these names because I don't even know what language they're in. I like the duplication of things. So there's two griffins and there's two trees. And both of those types of elements are very humbling. It reminds me of being in a cathedral that's designed to make you feel really, really small. I think this does that, which is impressive. And it's because of the intricacies and the sizing. And again, that duplication where you're flanked by these characters. The use of animation is perfect. It's subtle, but not distracting. And then we've got this video in the middle that I think is an advertisement for a hostel. Y nada, bien, el primer día llegamos, nos fuimos a... A ver, el sanatorio de Fontillas. ¿Que nos perdimos? Sí, nos perdimos. No, y nos volvimos. <risa> de esta última no ya capa la comunidad valenciana. El camping de la Val de la Guar es de segunda categoría. Nosotros solemos decir que el nuestro camping es una especie de extensión del pueblo. Porque me escapa, pero no es compensa más fe de que Honduras o la caravana, evidentemente. En cambio, el ayuntamiento de Mungalou ya es más caro, vea bien de 50 euros en temporada baja y 79 en temporada alta. Pero sobre todo, es una buena opción para gaudir de la natura. Comment below if you know what they're saying. And the scariest experience of the week is Liza's house. That bitch is dead. She dripping blood on the floor. But what's really scary are the ghosts. That is a scary way to do ghosts.
Thank you so much for watching till the end. If there is an experience that you have published or that you've bumped into that you'd like me to review, let me know in a comment below. That's the best way to give me a cue or just tag me in Twitter. We are at fractal labs underscore dev. If you want to get started building your own over experiences, YouTube will suggest a playlist at the end of this video and it can send you on your way following my journey and learning how to use over. What I'm still wondering is how do I get in touch with the people who've bought hexes but don't have anything published on them? I can help. I'm pretty good at it now. Come my way. We'll see you next Tuesday. Okay, bye.